What is going on, Savage here? Hope you're having a good day, and I hope that Warzone's treating you well, and I hope that your kill count and your win count is increasing day by day. Today, we're gonna be breaking down some viewer submitted gameplay, and basically in these videos, we're gonna go in depth on the reasons why I think he's playing well, or if he makes mistakes, the reasons why I think it's a mistake, and what I would do as an alternative to what he's doing. And that's gonna cover target priority, that's gonna cover uh, when and when not to shoot, that's gonna cover circle rotations, it's going to cover a wide variety of things, of course, not every video we're gonna be able to hit every topic, but hopefully throughout this entire series, you guys can develop a little bit better game sense. But before we dive into it, if you have not already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today, also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. You guys have been extremely supportive with the likes, with the comments. I love going through the comment section and everyone telling me that their wins are increasing, they're getting a lot more confident, they're playing more aggressive. I love to hear that because at the end of the day, it's all about having fun in Warzone. And if you can have fun and play more aggressive and get more kills and get more wins, that's a win-win for everybody. Also, if you guys are looking for other players to play with, we have over a thousand members in our Discord who are looking for players constantly. And like I always say, it's better playing with people from the community than playing with randoms. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, here we are spectating Bick and Sweet and his trio squad, and they look to be going stadium. Now, guys, whether you're new at Warzone or you're just struggling and you're trying to improve, I always highly recommend you guys pick a spot you want to land and try to land there as often as possible. You land stadium over and over and over and over again, guess what? You're gonna be very familiar with stadium. Whether you win or lose, that doesn't matter. You wanna develop a map awareness. I, for instance, love Boneyard. I know Boneyard like the back of my hand because I landed there so many times. So if I get into combat, I know how to rotate the buildings. I know how to rotate the, the broken down planes. I know how to outplay situations because of my map awareness. But if you guys go Boneyard for the first time ever, guess what? If you get in some trouble, you're gonna be trying to figure out the buildings and try to figure out where to go, why you're being chased or hunted down, and that's no bueno for anybody. You gotta be very careful when landing here not to go too close to helicopters if you're not gonna grab one because players will instantly land on the choppers and try to splat everyone within stadium. Uh, you might see that right here. Nope, he's just taking off and going away, but good on uh, Bick and Sweet for staying within the tent, kind of peeking real quick, making sure he wasn't about to get splatted. Yeah, I agree. Get a grip. This game is crazy with the ground loot. It seems like there's nothing but Origins and Car 98s laying around everywhere and weird. That's the two weapons he has. Now, I like the fact that they went ahead and grabbed the search objective and they're already going to go hit it. I'm sorry, we're not spectating a Bick and Sweet. We're actually spectating uh, Filth. Apologies, Filth. My bad, brother. He was the captain. I assumed wrong. I remember you want to get the search objectives as fast as possible and they're in the middle of a fight right now So I like the fact that the two teammates are collapsing on each other to help each other out while our dude filth is finishing up the objectives All right, here we are in a position where your team's not near you yet They look like they're working their way to you, but your team's not near you yet I believe there's two enemies. I heard somebody shooting and this guy was running within the gate as well So right now i'm gonna assume you're in a 1v2 position Granted, their backs to you, they have no idea you're there, and you have the staircase wall as cover. This would not be a bad thing to engage. Just be aware that your teammates are lagging a little bit behind, and the enemies also have a lot of cover. So when deciding when to shoot, of course, don't shoot right now, because you're going to hit them one time if you hit them at all, and then they're both going to know where you're there, and they're probably going to dominate you. So definitely be very careful of when you pick your fights and when you don't pick your fights. If there's an enemy out in the open with no cover, by all means, shoot him, blitz him down, don't hesitate at all. But in situations like this where the enemy is about to get to cover, hold your fire, get a better position, and then dominate the enemy. Oh, that's unfortunate. Alright, I like that the teammate called out the enemy instantly. I love that. Good shots on the enemy with the car 98. Now! Well, there you go. There it is. Right now is exactly the reason why I said at the beginning of the video to land at the same spot pretty often. That way you're familiar with stadium because right now they're looking for the search objective. Again, you pull up your big map and you mark the search objective. It will ping exactly where it's at. Granted, yes, you can see that it has an up arrow, so it's probably in the stands. But if you want to know the exact location, pull up your big map, ping the actual objective, and then go get it. If you land here every time, guess what? You're going to be very familiar with the layout, and it's going to take you no time at all to finish these objectives as fast as possible. I, for one, never come stadium, and I didn't even realize there was an elevator with a zip line in it. Um, nor have I ever been on this floor. I'm going to be honest with you guys right now. Where's the boy? Right underneath us. I'll get it, and I'll, you guys stay in here. 
All right. I, I like that. So right now, he's got enough money to go ahead and buy. So he's going to jump out and go ahead and buy. Um, when it comes to their teammates, y'all have enough for two UAVs. If you want to play extremely aggressive, um, definitely buy the loadout and get two UAVs. I don't like self-reses for one. You'll hardly ever see me get a self-res unless we have an abundance of money. Like we're just sitting on 20 grand each and we have UAVs for days. Then I'll buy a self-revive. Most of the time, you guys know this game's thirsty as shit. And I'm pretty aggressive. So if I die, it's because I pushed in and I'm in a very bad spot. Um, and I'm probably going to get executed anyway. So I'd rather keep that money, save it for UAVs and other things like that. That way I can put a trophy system on a car and start hunting down some kills. That's exactly what I recommend you do in this situation. Trios is an awesome game type. Duos is my favorite. Trios is my second favorite. You can just throw up UAV. All three of you guys can mark different enemies, and y'all can just chase them down one by one by one. And then by the time you kill them all, you can get more money. You'll already have another UAV spared. And it's just a rinse and repeat process. I love the tactic of that. So guys, make sure you utilize UAVs to your advantage. Now, right now they're going, it looks like they're looking for a bounty. I hope. Hey, there we go, boys. Now, I will say, basically based on the circle, I would not go down to downtown. For multiple reasons but first i'm gonna pull up the big map we'll look at this together um basically because of the circle you're going to be working yourself towards the edge right i love gatekeeping on the edge when it comes to any place but downtown downtown is very clustered a lot of people love sitting in buildings and if you're going to the edge of the circle within downtown or the edge is coming to you you're going to be running into a lot of teams camping you're going to be running into a lot of teams on the roofs camping and be running into a lot of teams in general and which isn't a bad thing but because it's downtown it's going to take a lot of time to fight these teams it's very time consuming downtown is a huge waste of time granted if it's one or two teams hunt them down quick and take them out but if you end up fighting one team getting shot by another now you got to fight them oh god you're out on plates and then you got to go hide replayed up you got to find a buy station to buy plates i definitely would not go downtown to grab this bounty i would find another bounty somewhere else also if you grab the bounty downtown guess what Nine times out of ten, it's going to throw that bounty downtown as well. So you're going to be staying there even longer. But that's just personal preference and anything. I don't want you guys to be afraid of downtown. I want you guys to be aware of the time that it will take to fight a team downtown. All right, there's gunshots coming from Fire Station. He goes ahead and pings it. Good use of pings, Bick and Sweet. I love the fact that they're pinging everything that they can. Now, when it comes to pushing Firehouse, especially in this area... I'm not sure exactly what Phil's doing. He's okay. He was running away from Firehouse, but now he's running to Firehouse. I like the fact that you're pushing Firehouse. It's Firehouse is not an easy building to push, but because you're on this side of it, it's fairly easy. Normally, if you're pushing on the opposite side of this Firehouse, you have the two windows on the on the second floor. You have the two windows on the top. Then you have the entire roof that's looking down on you, and they can peek from the front and the back. So there's a lot of different places you can get shot at if you're coming up from behind the building or on the northwest side, which is the opposite side, right? Same thing with the front. If you're coming in from the front, you have the you have the small doors in the front, you have the two big doors in the front, you have the tower and the entire roof. If you're coming from this side of the building, right? I love this side. The only thing you have to watch are these two windows. Also make sure no one's gonna peek the left side or the right side of the building. It's a much easier push, especially with three people. <laughs> yep, glass oh, broke. Broke. oh my goodness, bro. Alright, great job. The glass broke, which instantly notified the team that hey, there's a guy here, and guess what? The only glass. That was going to break that was towards them was the tower. So again, this is a better way to push. There's going to be team coming here because he was shooting at someone. All right, Phil definitely his armor. I would go ahead and be climbing that. I wouldn't even loot the rest of it just because I know that this place is already probably looted. But I like the fact that while he's moving, while he's climbing the ladder, he went ahead, pulled up his big map, told his teammate exactly where the enemies are at. Oh, rip. <laughs> Oh, uh, and now they know that there's an there's an enemy team at stadium. Now you can go back to stadium and kill this team. That's definitely a great option. I would do that. Unfortunately, a little bit of waste of time here with this one, but I'm not gonna hate on you. I've done it too. I think we all have. Yeah. All right, here we are, Res, and there's an enemy vehicle with a trophy system on it, and it looks like a, a full trio squad in there. And uh, maybe a maybe a, maybe a duble. It looks like it's only two of them. Oh, Ooh, I was about to say, don't do it. Don't do a bloodbath. Yeah, do not waste your kill streaks on a vehicle ever, right? Ever. All right, in this position here, they have enough money now to go ahead and buy UAVs and start playing a little aggressive, right? So that's exactly what I would do. Again, you guys want to avoid, you guys want to avoid at all costs wasting time and looting buildings like this because you have your loadout drop. Yes, you're getting cash, but you can also get cash from killing other teams, right? Or you could do objectives and get cash that way as well. So you don't want to waste too much time looting buildings like this because if we time everything that they loot, it's going to be a lot. Let's get 
All right, now they're going back to the bounty, and they're, they are still downtown. So this is going to be a crazy area. So much then. Flying in. <laughs> Watch roofs here. Just be careful. I hate downtown. I hate downtown too, brother. I hate downtown too. All right, you want to stay focused on your objective, and I like that. Most people would see the ghost let out and be like, oh, shit, let's go get ghosts. But you just worked your way all the way to this bounty objective. You better go grab it, right? This happens to me a lot with a couple of people that I play with. We'll almost be at a fight. We'll almost be at an objective. And as soon as the free loadout drops, they're like, let's go get ghosts. And they'll just start walking off. And now we're in a 2v4 situation is getting shit on. Make sure if you take the time to go to an objective, you grab the objective before you turn around for a free loadout drop. You'll be fine without ghosts. Ghost is not a necessity. I've won many games without using ghosts. A lot of people don't even use ghosts. So make sure you're going for your objective. Stay focused. Don't stay tunnel visioned. Just stay focused. This is good, dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm getting I'm getting heart palpitations watching this. Yeah, no. Watch there be a guy up here the right shield. Woo! It's not even up. That's not even looted. Below. Rip. All right, now we have a target downtown, and this is something I want to address. All right, basically what this is doing, guys, is it's just making you fight against the edge of the circle when the circle's only going to move in a minute. Right now, it's going to take you about 45 seconds to get to this area where the bounty is, and I'm assuming he's on the roof. Then you're going to have to run out in the open, leave hard cover, and you're a pretty easy target from this guy. Then if you get in a fight, you run the risk of getting third party and taking damage from gas. The last thing you want to do is fight downtown when the circle is on the edge of downtown and moving elsewhere. So guys, make sure you have that in game plan. Like I said a couple of videos ago, I want you guys to assume where the final circle is going to be and make your decisions based on that. Like, for example, if I assume that the final circle is going to be military, there's no way in hell I would fight this team right here. I would focus on position and maybe gatekeep this team. Um, but this is just a bad fight in general. So let's see how this team plays this. Granted, they may win the fight, and I really hope they do. But again, you want to focus on positioning more than anything. That's how you win games more consistently. All right, so let's look at the minimap right now. They've got a bounty, they've got an enemy under them, then they've got an enemy vehicle as well. So you're looking at potentially three separate teams, and you've got 45 seconds before you have to move and get safe. All right, so the vehicle actually picked up the bounty, and the bounty's moving out. Good move on the bounty. I wouldn't even shoot at the vehicle at this point. One, you're not going to be able to get the kill. And two, I do not want to reveal my position to the enemies. Now, if they go for that free loot, that's a whole different ball game. And I like the fact that he's predicting that's what he's going to do. And he whipped out the airstrike. And he's going to hopefully call it in on these guys and kill them. Whether the guys get out of the vehicle to get their loadout or not is irrelevant. The fact that Filth already had this awesome plan in his head just lets me know that he's thinking about everything going on. He's trying to predict the future. I love to see this right here. They didn't go for it, but like I said, regardless, I like the fact that he predicted it. I reckon we get safe. Yeah, so you've got 12 seconds. I definitely would be on that mountain. That is a great mountain to gatekeep the entire side of the map on. I call that Death Mountain because every time someone's on there and I have to get safe, guess what? So look at this right here, guys. Um, the hill has the high ground, which is one of the best advantages in the game, right? Not only do they have the high ground, but you have to cross a ravine with very little cover. So now you have no cover, you have the low ground, you are in a complete disadvantage. So I definitely would have recommended getting to safety first, as I did earlier this video. Gatekeep them. Gatekeep them, baby. I like it. Got to. Now be very careful. You will never see me floating like this. You won't. Granted, yes, you get to fly further if you hold your parachute out, but I would jump off the building and pull this parachute at the last second. If I was on this hill, or if I was anywhere in this vicinity, and I saw a squad doing this, guess what? I just got a triple kill. Don't do this, guys. You're a vulnerable target. Every game I'm in, I end up getting a kill or two um, off people doing this, guys. Again, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position. But Savage, I get to fly further and get closer to the hill. Yeah, that's cool if it works out, but most of the time, it's not going to work out. You guys want to go ahead and plan for that. This right here is just giving me anxiety. Now, when it comes to getting to this hill and gatekeeping, you want to make sure you clear the entire area, right? The entire the entire hill is still in bounds. Now, something I do like to see is the fact that Blue is still keeping his eye downtown, trying to gatekeep the guys at Fire Station. Um, Orange is watching the compound to their backside, and Green is clearing out the south side of the hill. I love to see that. When teams push new areas, you want to see this on your minimap. You want to see the fact that y'all are clearing different areas. That way, you're protected at all angles. What I hate to see is just basically if these three teammates were all looking downtown, you're just asking to get shot in the head, right? You're just asking to get shot in the back. You're just asking to get executed. 
You don't want to do that, guys. I love what this team's doing. They're scanning the entire area. They're making sure they're protected on all fronts. Very good teamwork, boys. All right, so we've got two enemies now. I will tell you, I love the Kilo to death. It's probably my favorite weapon as of right now. Don't take these shots. This is too much range. You'll hit the target, yes. You may break the armor, yes. But getting the down, it's not going to happen. No way, right? If you have a sniper on the team, it's a different story. But again, these guys have to come to you. Actually, we, we can stay here. Gatekeep anyone moving in from downtown. Also, guys, don't be afraid to move on the hill. You don't want to sit in one area for too long because the longer you sit in that one spot, there could be another team pushing that same hill from the south, and then they're going to have a better position than you, right? All right, so we've gone ahead and pushed the compound. I want you guys to notice there is a bounty on the mini-map. Every time I push the compound, I love grabbing bounties. That way, I have a chance of somehow identifying an enemy that's within the compound. Since you're brand new to the compound, since you have no idea what's happened here, you have no idea what the enemy situation looks like, you want to grab the bounty that way, there's a slight chance it pings somebody in the compound and then you can force a fight. So that's exactly what I would do. All right, so the teammate has grabbed a bounty and unfortunately the bounty was not identified within this compound. It was identified somewhere else. However, that does not mean that there's nobody closer to you. The bounty tries to identify an enemy that's close-ish to you. So guys, make sure that even though the bounty was called somewhere up to the north, you're still aware there's probably people in this compound. This is a very hot compound. I would be immensely surprised if there's no one else here. I'd probably delete my channel just because I'm that confident. Hey, I don't have to delete my channel anymore. Wait until you get a clear shot. Did you hit him? All right, two things that I didn't like right there. They took a sniper shot and they didn't ping the enemy. If they would have pinged the enemy, that would have given Filth a better idea of where the enemy's at. He wouldn't have to use his heartbeat sensor. He could just go out there, find the guy, target him and laser him down. Because the enemy is running out in the open. The enemy is crossing a street with no cover. If you guys are in a situation where you have a bounty on you, you want to get the high ground. This position right here is give me anxiety. You want to grab a roof of some sort. You want to get on the second floor of this building. You want to get elevation. With elevation, guess what? You can see more of an area. Right here, the only thing you see is some trees, some buildings, a vehicle, and that's it. It's very clustered and condensed. The higher you are, the better your visual. So make sure you work your way to the high ground. My dog. Remember, you have 15 seconds till you have to get safe. Position is one of the most important aspects of the game, so you don't want to waste too much time with this fight. Now, the threat keeps going up and down, up and down. We don't know exactly where the threat is. It could be the team in front of them. It could be a team behind them. We don't know, so you want to push together. Now, I love the fact that they're heading west, trying to get a left flank on the compound. The last thing you want to do is try to push across an open street with the team you've already shot at, sitting at the car dealership, also Superstore. You want to avoid those fights. I like the fact they're going this way. They're going to come up through the gas station and hopefully go to the garage area of airport. Alright, when it comes to dropping money, and this is something that I see a lot, so don't feel hated on, but this is something I see a lot. When you're dropping money, guys, just drop it. If you're the person in front, you drop your money. So basically, Phil, in this situation, I, if I were you, I would have dropped my money and kept running and let my teammate behind me that had the other money pick up my cash, and then buy whatever I wanted him to buy. Basically, what that does is if you saw, y'all were just kind of standing there. Your teammate was vulnerable. You were vulnerable. You had to backtrack, which is wasted time, right? And then you're out in the open just waiting to exchange cash. You just keep moving fluidly. You pull up your menu. You drop the cash. Guess what? Your movement is maintained, and nobody can get an easy headshot on you. The moment you stop and turn around, easy headshot. The moment you're standing there waiting for your teammate to drop money, easy headshot. Also, your teammate dropping the money, easy headshot. Don't put yourself in these positions to get easily headshotted. Granted, there's probably nobody here on the edge of the circle. But because y'all did this, even on the edge of the circle, I would assume this is what you normally do, so make sure you're avoiding this at all costs. Whoever's in front of the line drops their money, and the last guy behind picks up all the cash and buys what y'all need. You guys keep also, with doing that, the person in front, when they drop their money, they can actually clear the area, scan the area. You don't want to be first person there at the buy station like you are right now. Your teammates are lagging behind you, and guess what? Somebody pops out the window, somebody pops off the roof, and now guess what else is popping off? Your head. You want to make sure someone's clear, cleared the area. That's another reason why I would recommend orange is the one to buy. If you were there, you could start clearing. Green could start clearing the other one. And orange should be relatively safe. It's not always 100% fail proof, but it is the better strategy. I'm getting you a and popping it. So we got an enemy on minimap. Instantly just converge on him. It's only one guy, but again, people use ghosts. And even though they're playing as a squad, 
There may be a random out there that doesn't have ghost for whatever reason. Came back from the gulag, got bought back by his teammates, just doesn't like ghost. So always assume there's a full team. Yeah. Found him. Full kill, there's a guy behind the truck. All right, there's also a guy, target prioritization, guys. So I saw this guy a few seconds ago on top of the hill. You want to always make sure your eyes are scanning even when you're shooting at somebody. But Savage, how am I supposed to stay focused and hit my shots if I'm looking around? That's where peripheral vision comes into play. I was focused on the enemy because I couldn't really see him either. Um, and I noticed this guy was running over here. So at this point, the enemy is vulnerable. If he crosses the street, he's super vulnerable. So I would instantly diverge from shooting that guy to this guy um, and get the easy down. All right, so we have one enemy down, we have two cracked, and we have green suppressing fire. So with that, I would move across the street and get an angle on these guys. The last thing you want to do is get in this long-ass fight. The enemy team gets position first, and then they're the ones gatekeeping you. So I love the fact that blue and orange are pushing aggressively, trying to find the fight, trying to get the teammates. Now, green needs to be pinging the enemy, trying to ping the enemy. That way, whenever I do blue, pushes across, he doesn't have to scan. He'll know exactly where the enemies are at, and he'll be able to get the double kill just like he did just now. Pings are everything, guys. I want to start seeing your videos involve a lot of live pings. All right, here I'm moving to get safe, and I want you guys to notice that Orange is off by himself, and he's frozen, right? He's looking at something. I'm not sure what it is, but he's not moving. I don't mind the separation, but if your team's trying to get safe, you need to be moving with your team. You don't have to be up their butts, but you need to be moving with them. He's focused on something different right now. not really sure what, but there's no calls being made, and he's pretty separated. You guys need to get safe. You need to be focused on getting safe. And everyone else that's around you is going to be moving to get safe too. So the last thing you want to do if you're yellow is get caught out in the open like this and die because your teammates are already in the tunnel. They're already by themselves. And you're still up top somewhere kind of looking whatever it is you're looking at. So be very careful leaving yourself separated. All right, Orange is jumping down now. So he doesn't seem that distracted. Maybe. What happened? Rip. Rip. I don't know if he's parachuting. He got shot out of the parachute. I'm not really sure of, of much. But again, with that fight right there, um, I definitely would have been with my team the whole time. I wouldn't have stopped to gaze off. I would have been rotating with my team. Again, you don't have to hold pockets, but stay relatively close. Now, so the enemy really did a bad thing right there. He put himself out of position for no reason at all. The enemy got the down, then he executed him. So he knew that he was not by himself because a team wipe notification did not pop up on the enemy's screen, which would, in my head, leave me to believe, guess what? There's the rest of his team inside the tunnel. So why he jumped down there to hard peak in the middle of nowhere with no cover is beyond me. There's no shame in peeking this and getting some shots off, but come down to the edge, lean peek the corner right here, and shoot around the corner to try to get some downs. But regardless, this is just a bad fight to pick in the first place. He should have got the down on Bick and got the execution and moved elsewhere all right long story short we got our teammate back i think they got their loot back and here we are in the tunnel about to um hopefully get positioned now this circle right here is very scary i'm gonna pull it up on this big map right here and we're gonna discuss it but basically the last thing you want to do is be in this position it's a very hard position to be in there's 10 enemy teams left there's 24 enemy players total left as well and guess what there's probably going to be somebody hiding in this little tower right here i would imagine i'd be more worried about the houses in front of me that are trying to gatekeep everybody coming to safety and also that entire hill to the left. So what I would wanna do is just push the tower head on and then maybe rotate from the tower and then go to the compounds up to the northeast. A lot of players would be like, let's just get the tower. They'll go to the tower, they'll go up the zip line and guess what? There's a team already there waiting to kill them. So that's why I would avoid going up tower and I would just push to another compound. Oh goodness, Holy shit. The There's a sniper right there looking right at him now. This is a very, mm, this sucks, this sucks, bro. This sucks in this position, rotate backwards, come out of this tum tunnel at a different angle and get a safer position. This is going to be a very hard push, right? Um, but I definitely would reposition. There's also... Oh, orange ping. I'm, go I'm backing up. Backing up and going right. Come here. Come. All right, I like the fact that they're doing exactly what I recommended. They're rotating out a different area. This is a great strat. Lessers of two evils, right? You're going to have the entire airport to your right. You're going to have to worry about people coming out of airport, people coming out of that plane. But that's a much more winnable fight because you have tents blocking you. You have a bunch of stone objects blocking you. You're safer from airport than you actually are 
from the compound with the sniper in it. So I love the fact they rotated out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They're legitimately doing the things that I'm saying they should do, right? Yeah. Now, just because you're repositioning and running from a fight doesn't make you a pussy. Remember that, guys. You want to pick a smart fight. Do not ego challenge a fight you're going to lose. You did get cursed. Right in front of us. And there's a team up there. Yeah, there's definitely a team in the tower. But if there was no team in the tower and you're confident in that, by all means, push them, get the high ground. It's honestly, as much as I hate the tower, it's the safest part in the map right now. Now, when the circle rotates outwards, if it goes northeast, um, then this tower will be in a very screwed up position because if you jump out of tower, you run the chance of getting shot out the air. Now, this is something I don't like, right? He Granted, he's about to pull up his map. He's going to scan the area and come up with a game plan. So that's fine, but... You and your entire team are in a building right now. You have no visual of anything going on around you. You're not trying to look for picks. You're not trying to look for enemies. You're not trying to find out what's going on the map enemy wise, right? So basically, all right, right now I'd be playing this wall. I wouldn't be inside the building. I'd be playing the wall of the tower if I was in this position at this exact moment. That way, one, I can get the guys coming from over here. If they try to push in, I can actually shoot them in the open. Um, two, there's going to be somebody out here that was pushing in to get safe, right? Um, there's four loadout drops right here, so somebody's going for their drops. So I would definitely try to utilize those as picks as well. Um, right now, you being inside a building, all it's going to do is allow an enemy team to push in, and if they have C4s, concussions, you guys will just get dolly whopped right off the bat. What was that? I would work my way out of this area at all costs. I noticed the teammates just holding the, she's just holding the heartbeat sensor to the wall. Again, guys, I'd rather have visual on the enemy and getting shot at than sitting behind a wall, heart beating. Just watching them get closer and closer and closer. Then you're just delaying the inevitable. The Work your way outside the building. No, Start fighting outside with no, cover. No. Hey, look, the circle rotated northeast. I didn't watch this game before. I had no idea. Again, it's just my game knowledge based on the circles I've had previously. If the circles start rotating to the north, guess what? They're usually going to rotate to the north at the end of the game as well. Their circles are usually rotating towards the east. Guess what? They're usually going to rotate, keep rotating to the east. I have a video on in-game circles coming out this week. Make sure you guys watch that video. It will be a banger. But again, guys, I wouldn't be in here. You've got 41 seconds to move safely. Now, we know there's at least two teams here, right? There's a team on blue mark and there's a team up here. So we know there's at least two teams. That accounts for three of you guys, right? That leaves five enemy teams left. By putting yourself in a building and hiding it in-game, you're handicapping yourself. Now, I understand the fact that you made it so far in the game, and you don't want to be out there getting shot at. But again, you don't have to run in the open. Just open the door, peek outside, kind of look, see if you see anything, just like he's doing now. And if you get shot at, run back inside and play it up and then reposition, right? You've got you've got so many different things around you you can play. you got a wall you can play. you got the entire outside of the tower you could play. When it comes to deciding how do I push the circles, how do I get safe, map, knowledge, I know that if they go that way, that he's looking right now, if they wrap around this building and go up, there's a lot more rocks, there's a little bitty ridge, there's a lot more hills, there's a lot more cover for them to push the compound and get safe. All right, he's moving out, he's going right, I love it. Look how much cover you have right here, right? Look at this. First off, you have an entire wall. Your entire right side's safe, so the right side of this wall is amazing to play in this position. Secondly, if you want to push a house, you can because you have a hill. You can push up here. Yes, you're a little bit in the open right here, but only for a split second. So if you want to push Yellow House, you can do that by pushing this ridge, kind of scanning the area, making sure you're safe, and then pushing the building after that. And then you can just kind of hop from place to place. All right, I like the fact that he asked his teammate if he had a gas mask. There was no turn response. In, in in, you want to go ahead and try to find out the gear that your team does have. If your, if your team does have gas mask, then you can make a play off that. If you need to run into the gas to get safe, you could utilize the gas to your advantage. Yep. There's people in this house right here. Two to our left. Oh, they're in there. All right, you've got two C4. I would go ahead and throw the C4 up. There we go. There you go. Got the crack. Remember, you got one more. I'd I'd throw both of them in there and really just crack the shit out of them. That way, he's forced to play it up. Got the down. Great down. Down one. Great down. They're gonna third party us. Those other people. He's right. They are gonna third party you. So you need to push this fast. Now, the staircase, this attic, is very scary. Right? The window he threw the C4 in, there's a little bitty head glitch. The guy can kind of lean peek to watch the staircase, and it's very hard to kill that. He might be going for the res, but it's trios, so you might have three up here. You don't, you want to push it fast so they can't get the res off, they can't get their plates off, and you don't get third party. You want to win this fight fast. The longer you take the fight this, the more time that team that came up on Heartbeat has to push in 
in third party. But again, be careful by the head glitch by the window. You might get shot over here. There he is behind the... All right, there he was behind the head glitch um, by the bookshelf. All right, now let's go ahead and look at this. One, we're out in the open. We're looking, we're at, we're in a window and we're plating up and we're going to sit here for a second. Don't sit in windows to plate up, guys. I gr granted, I know you want to look down and see if the enemy's coming around, but guess what? The enemy did show himself. He's going to be looking at the window and you're an easy target and you're going to be back in the same position you're in now. Down plates, trying to plate up so you can join the fight. Two, there's a red dot right here. There's a guy outside the zone. I love the fact that green is gatekeeping this asshole. Good on green. You guys want to be aware of this team over here. Also, I'm pretty sure there's another team that's probably pushed up to your building, aka the guys that were on Heartbeat earlier. They probably pushed you guys and they heard you get in a fight. So be ready for that. But again, get out of this window when you're plating up. Um, get out of the window in general. I got laser from this way. I don't know where. But the last time I seen the other they were just. All right. Again, in the window, you're an easy target. Very easy target. You got to get away. Also, if the enemy had an RPG or anything like that, or a grenade, and you're sitting there going prone to plate up, they could throw the grenade, shoot the RPG, throw the C4, and you're an easy, easy kill. Oh. Do you have one? Hurry up, in, in, in this house. Oh. Got him, Danny. He's in there. Shit. Down him. Shielding up. Oh, yeah. Did you get down the other guy? Did you full kill him? Alright. Uh, Remember, uh, we don't have to stay inside the circle. Everyone got gas masks? Yeah, yeah. Alright, now it is a 3v3v3. V3 this is where circle favor dictates all, and also on how well you're able to rotate to safety. This is where boys become men because it's going to be a tough fight. Now, I can go ahead and assume that there's going to be a team in the house by buy station and probably in the exact house next to them. Maybe not, but that's probably exactly how it's going to be laid out. So you got to be very careful how you play this out. You need to wait for the circle to collapse to tell you where to go. And then after that, come up with the game plan. 3v3v3. Three, three, three. Oh, is this? Whereabouts? Mark him up. Literally down here. Sorry, down there. Alright, so Circle is moving to our favor. I love that. One of your teammates right this second needs to be rotating to this other house. They need to be rotating. They've got a shed right here, so the safety net is there. They will not get shot cross into the next house. You want to rotate this house so you can get the window and should legitimately shoot anybody that runs from these compounds. This is the winning position right here. This house right here will win you the game. So instantly get out of this house, start rotating to the next one, and then catch everybody that's trying to move into safety. Use your gas mask. Don't be afraid to go in the gas. You have a gas mask with full ticks on it, and the circle's going to your favor. The longer you stay here, so they're not moving with the circle, and this gives me anxiety. The longer you stay here, if this team was aggressive, if I was the enemy team, my ass would be running to this building. I would already be here at this point, right? And then if the team did make it here, you guys are now in a screwed up position because they'll be gatekeeping you. If the circle's moving, whatever direction it's moving, you're moving with it almost instantly if there's cover. Of course, if it's out in the open, don't do that. But if there's buildings like in this scenario, that's exactly what you want to do. Get to safety, get the gatekeep, and win the game. No way, bro. So now in this scenario, what has happened? We've started panicking. We've lost all sense of what's going on on the map, right? Everything's just kind of chaotic right now. One guy's in the house. One guy's not. There's a guy over here. There's a guy over there. Everyone's split up. Airstrikes are coming in. This is when people start to panic. People start to overthink. People start to underreact. Now, I like the fact he's going for the res with the circle coming in. You both have gas masks. Look at that. So definitely utilize the hell out of that. Get your teammate back up and get safe. We did it, boys. We did it. Boom, baby. I love it. But, Filth, congrats on the win, man. I really enjoyed spectating that game and analyzing it. Thank you for submitting it to me. I think there was a lot of lessons to be learned in it. So hopefully you can grow from the video. 
and everybody else watching can go from the video. But again, guys, if you would like to submit your gameplay for review to be posted on this channel, make sure you upload a recent match to YouTube then send me the link via Discord. Our Discord link will be in the description below as well in the comments. And when you join the Discord, make sure you post the video link in the video submission page along with your KD, how many kills you have in Warzone and how many wins you have as well. But have a good afternoon. Good luck in Warzone. I hope you get a lot of wins. And until next time, guys, good luck in Warzone. Guys, thank you for watching. I really love the fact that you guys are learning a lot from this video series. I'm really loving the feedback that I'm getting. You guys want to see some other tips and tricks videos, make sure you check out these two videos right here. And as always, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button below. But you have a good one and keep improving.